Graham, um, welcome back. Thanks for thanks for joining us again at MIPIM. What are you seeing at the moment in terms of that area of living, whether that's student housing, residential? Well, I mean, the demand for uh, residential accommodation is obviously there. I mean, it's 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 on everybody's everybody's lips everywhere you go. The demand is huge, but we're seeing a. Um, sectorization so you're getting all these little pockets of different types of accommodation a lot of our clients are focused at the moment on that student and the young person and the entry-level accommodation and we're seeing quite a lot of discussion going along with the local authority about minimum sizes local authorities want all these units to be significantly bigger but they also want us to deliver an affordable offer and, and younger people coming out of university, they want to have their own homes, their own places. They don't need necessarily the space if the location is right. So if we can get them in the city centre where they've got the opportunity to use the, the cafes and the bars and the public spaces, their actual living accommodation can be a lot tighter than perhaps the local authority are pushing for. So that's been quite interesting and in trying to, to generate the developments with multiple units uh, where those units are much smaller, much tighter. We're seeing a lot of that. And so does that require a kind of innovative approach to the design of that to be able to either find a way to fit these spaces, you know, th these new developments in? Yeah, I mean, we've recently got plenty of consent for a, a scheme, a 98-unit scheme in the centre of Leeds. And innovation was essential to get that together really. The site was very, very tiny and when we first presented it to the local authority they, they, they rejected it saying it wasn't even a site. You know, the overlooking and the rights of light and issues were just so great that we wouldn't be able to get over those. But we managed to come at it with some creativity and we managed to bring on the local authority and get them to understand where we were coming from. We twinned the scheme with the neighbouring building and started to share those public facilities, if you like. The, it's for students, so the study rooms and the lounges were sharing over the two sites, which allowed us to increase the lettable square footage. We managed to convince the client that it was a windfall site. He owned the building next door, and so with that windfall site, he could actually take that out of his appraisal value. And we worked with the local authority on how we can improve the public realm generally beyond our red line. So everybody in the team all compromised together, if you like, the client, the local authority, everyone, and made this thing commercially viable. And it's working, it's great. And that's good, I mean, it picks up a couple of the themes that we've been talking around as well, which is how innovation um, is beginning to change how people are designing cities around that livability, wellness, but also the, the idea that if you're using the communal areas a lot, um, then actually the size of the living accommodation doesn't need to be quite so big. So it's interesting that, that you've, you've picked up on that, and, and thanks very much for sharing that today. Thank you. Great, thanks for having me.